Scammers use every means to find victims that you can think of. People create kind of a relationship with people. Sometimes they use professional relationships. Sometimes they use a romantic relationship. Sometimes they just use people's interest in making money. They have all kinds of tactics. Pig butchering is a new type of scam that involves cryptocurrency and uses this rather colorful metaphor, pigs and, and butchering. So in this case, pigs means a victim, a person who is tricked into being sort of fattened up. You're enticed to spending more and more and more and more money. You're getting fattened up. And then at some point you're butchered or slaughtered, which means sort of to mix metaphors a little bit, the rug is pulled out from under you. You come to a point where you find out that it's a scam and the scammer kind of runs away with all your money. In the case of the story that I've just published for Forbes, this involves a victim named Sai. He was approached kind of out of the blue from a text message that he got from a person who called herself Jessica. She claimed that they were old uh, work colleagues and they started a conversation that way. Sai was at a very emotionally vulnerable point in his life. His father was in the last stages of his life where finances were on his mind, knowing that he would have to provide financially for medical care. And, you know, over the period of a couple of weeks, their conversations started moving from kind of chit chat to becoming more frequent and to becoming more intense and revolving around discussions of finance and specifically around cryptocurrency. And she told him that she had made boatloads of cash through you know, supposed insider information that was, she was receiving from an uncle in Hong Kong and that she could teach him also how to make the same amount of money. Over the period of several weeks, she had him initially transfer money to crypto.com. He put in at first uh, $10,000. And then he used that money to buy at first Ethereum and later Tether, which he then used to transfer to an app that he downloaded off the Apple App Store called MetaTrader. MetaTrader is a trading app that allows brokerages to kind of plug in to their trading interface. Sai didn't totally follow what was happening. In MetaTrader, it looks just like any kind of normal trading interface that one would use. That's available in the Google Play Store. It's available in the Apple App Store. It's an app that has a lot of good ratings. And that was one of the things that made Sai think that this whole operation was legitimate. He believed that his investment was making money. <laughs> They're showing him what he wants to see. They're showing him what he believes to be profits. Jessica would tell him kind of out of nowhere to click buy up or down in the app. He didn't fully understand what that meant, but what he did know was that each time he followed her instructions, almost always it would show that his you know, purported investments would end higher. If you're trading on a legitimate trading interface, right, you see the profits and losses uh, over time. And this is exactly what he saw. And at every single step of the way, he would send screenshots to Jessica showing her that he was following her directions, showing her that he actually was, you know, wiring money to crypto.com and then transferring it to MetaTrader, probably using a particular plugin called Virtual Dealer they are able to present false information and show returns that do not exist. They're basically just creating an elaborate deception to make him believe that he can make his money. During the course of this scam, his father actually passed away. And that was, I think, around the time when Jessica decided to go for the butchering. This so-called big market came just after Sai's father passed away. <laughs> On the one hand, it's easy to blame people and say, well, you know, you should have known better. But I think after talking to Sai for such a long time and reading through this transcript, really any one of us could be manipulated. I think scammers are really good at 
exploiting those weaknesses. I can just imagine being in a situation where you've experienced a, a really traumatic loss in your life. And, and here's a person who wants to supposedly listen to you and wants to hear you and supposedly wants to help you. Experts believe that the scale of these scams is in the billions of dollars annually. And it's quite frightening because there have been relatively few documented cases of victims being able to get their money back. The scammers are believed to be people largely, if not entirely, in Southeast Asia, primarily operating out of Cambodia, Myanmar, and Laos. The people that are doing the scams, in many instances, according to reporting that I've done and research that's being done by the Global Anti-Scam Organization, are people who themselves, shockingly, are victims also. Oftentimes, these are people, Chinese-speaking or English-speaking, who are lured from countries like Malaysia, Philippines, Thailand, Taiwan, through the prospect of a job ad. They see a job ad, people are looking for work, people have been, you know, lost work during the pandemic and see an opportunity to come to Cambodia, to come to Myanmar, to come to Laos, to work maybe in a casino, to work in a call center, something like that. And in many, many instances, people find that when they get there, their passports are seized, their phones are seized, and they're basically put to work scamming people. This type of scam originated largely among Chinese speaking communities and has since expanded to English speaking communities as well. They are told to scam people, and this is a way to just extract money from people who live in the United States and in countries around the world. So, you know, American law enforcement, and I'm sure law enforcement agencies around the world, are trying to work uh, as hard as they can to put a stop to this. But as of now, it seems that the scammers have the upper hand.